So in a previous lesson, we learned how to find missing sides for right angle triangles using trigonometry. Now the question is, what about if I have a missing angle that I need to find? How do I find that? Can I use the same thing? Do I have to use something else? Is it even possible? And that's what this lesson is about. It turns out we can do it, and the way we do it is actually very similar to, to how we find a missing side using trigonometry. You actually use almost the same process. Let's start off this question together. So, in this question, we have two sides that we know the lengths of, and we have a missing angle. So how do we find it? Our first step, same as before, is to label the sides. The thing to keep in mind is this is the, the angle in question, so if that's the angle in question, the, the angle we're concerned with, we have to label the side. So we know this is going to be the hypotenuse, right? And what's this side going to be? The opposite or the adjacent? Well, it's across from that angle A, so we would say it's the opposite, right? It's not beside it. The one down here is the adjacent, but in this question, we don't really care about that adjacent one. We're not given it, and we don't have to find it. We just have to find the angle. So we know that the question we're dealing with deals with O and H, opposite and hypotenuse. So which one of the trig ratios should we use? This is the thing we like to always write at the top of our page. Sokatoa, because this will tell us which ratio to use. So we're looking for the one that has O and H in it. And if you look, sine has O and H in it. So remember, our sine of angle A is equal to opposite over hypotenuse, right? That's what the O and the H mean. So it's just equal to opposite over hypotenuse. So now all we need to do is plug in what we know. This time we don't know the angle, so we're going to leave it as sine A. But we know the opposite. The opposite is 17. And the adjacent, or the hypotenuse, I should say, is 25. So sine A is 17 over 25. Now, the thing is, in our previous one, we used the sine button on our calculator to find it, and that's because we could just plug in sine of some angle. But the problem is, sine is on this side with the A. We want to get the A by itself, right? We want to solve this equation for A. So in order to do that, we need to undo this sine. We need to get rid of this sine. So before we do that, let's go back to, to thinking about something called opposite operations. You might remember from doing a little bit of algebra, there are each operation has an opposite that undoes it. So for example, if we have plus or adding, what's the opposite of adding? Subtracting, right? What's the opposite of multiplying? We know it's dividing. What's the opposite of squaring something? Like if we have x squared, what's the opposite of squaring something? We should remember that it's the square root, right? So what's the opposite of sine of something? It actually is another button on your calculator, and it's just sine negative 1. You might see this button. Often to press this button, you need to do like sine, press the second function and then the sine button. Um, but it's that's what it looks like. It's sine negative 1. And this means inverse sine which just means opposite of sine, undo sine. There's the same thing for cos. The opposite of cos is cos negative 1, and the opposite for tan is tan negative 1. So whenever we want to get rid of sine, we need to do sine negative 1, or sine inverse, as it's called. Let me just actually write that down. This is called sine inverse. Okay, I-N-V-E-R-S-E. Okay, so back to our problem. So in order to get rid of this sine, what we do is we do sine inverse to that whole side. Now, remember, with our equations, we can't just do it to one side, so we got to do it to the other side too. So we're going to do sine inverse to this side too. So what's going to happen is this sine inverse and this sine are going to cancel out, and we're going to be left with A equals... Well, all we have to put into our calculator is sine inverse 
So shift sine or second function sine, and then 17 over 25. In my calculator, if I do this, it tells me the answer is 42.84 degrees. That's what A is. Now, you should try that yourself. See if it works on your calculator. One thing that you do need to be aware of, if you're putting this in your calculator, if you're putting in sine negative one, for some calculators, you need to put it in brackets. So you should go like this, 17 divided by 25. You should do something like that. And if you do that, it's gonna spit this answer out. Remember, if it's not giving you that answer, um, you either maybe forgot to put the brackets because the brackets are important. We're doing the sine inverse of this whole thing or your calculator needs to be in DEG mode or degree mode. If it's in RAD mode or GRAD mode, then it won't work. You got to make sure your calculator is in DEG degree mode. Okay, so that's the answer. You realize it took us a few minutes to do that question, but really that's because I was explaining it. If you look, it was only really three steps that we did. Just to refresh, we found the opposite and the hypotenuse. Sorry, we, we labeled opposite and hypotenuse on the, on the uh, diagram. And then we realized it was sine that used opposite hypotenuse. And then all we did is we did the inverse sine of 17 over 25. I want you to try the same thing for the second question. Pause the video here, try it yourself, unpause it, and you will see the solution. So the answer you should have gotten was 36.87 degrees. And the way I did that was that I identified, first of all, the, um, the sides we're concerned with here are the opposite and the adjacent to angle A. So then which one uses opposite and adjacent? Tan, right? And tan is opposite over adjacent. So that's where I wrote that. Then I plugged in three and the four for the opposite and adjacent. And then I took the tan inverse of both sides on the left side, the tan inverse cancels out with the tan. That's the reason why we do it. So we're just left with A. And on the right side, tan inverse of 3 over 4 is just 36.87. And that's it. That's the answer. So I want you to try these two questions down below now. And the answers are at the bottom. So pause it. Really try them yourself. Okay? Unpause it when you're done and you will see the full solutions. There we go. There are the two solutions to this problem. You notice in the first one, we had to use cosine because it was adjacent and hypotenuse. And that's probably the mistake that uh, most of you would make if you made a mistake, is um, getting confused about what's the hypotenuse here. Remember, the hypotenuse is the one that's across from the right angle. So this is the hypotenuse. And then beside angle X is 12. This, this is the adjacent side, right? And in this one, be careful again, this is 13 is the adjacent and four is the opposite. So we used tan again, okay? So it's your turn now to try the rest of the problems in this handout. The answers are at the end um, and you should be able to figure it out based on what we just did, okay? Good luck.